Hey there, everyone. My name is John from the Company of Heroes team, and we are here in Cologne, Germany for Gamescom 2022. And we're extremely excited to be here with all of our German fans to show off Company of Heroes 3. And I'm even more excited to be here with two of our uh, dev team. Uh, you might recognize this gentleman here from uh, our most recent uh, Mission Alpha. Uh, Steve, can you intro who you are and what do you do on Co3? Hi, everyone. I'm Steve Melly, executive producer on Company of Heroes. And uh, of course, uh, we also have my friend Andy here. Who are you? What do you do? My name is Andy Fedorchuk, and I am a system designer on Company Heroes 3. Uh, so, like I said, we've got a ton of great questions. We polled our uh, players on our social channels, on Discord. Uh, we want to answer your burning questions. I got some curveballs in here for these folks. So, uh, first up, Steve, uh, Relic is at Gamescom. We are here showing off Co, Co 3. Uh, what are we showing people today? We, were, we are super excited to have people to get their hands on this uh, demo that we've brought, brought out. Over the last year, we've been showing off our game as much as we can, getting it in players' hands so that they can give us feedback and tell us what they think. Last year, we had our, our pre-alpha uh, pre preview, which uh, showcased our uh, single-player campaign on Italy, got people to see that campaign map and what that was all about. Later in the year, we got players' hands on our multiplayer game uh, so that they could play with a couple of our factions, see what was available there. And then just recently, we did our Mission Alpha, and again, introducing the North African operation, getting players' hands on it, getting feedback from them to see what the, what is hap what they like, what they don't like, what they're thinking. Here now at uh, Gamescom, we've got two experiences. We've got a skirmish against the AI, you're playing as the Brits, and you're uh, getting a chance to try a North African map. We also have, a again, our campaign map on the Italian dynamic campaign map that we have for everyone. And you get to play, you, we start you off, midway through the campaign around uh, mission um, uh, ep uh, turn 25 you get a chance uh, to like play with a bunch of camp uh, companies there that we've placed out there uh, naval units uh, air force you got a uh, lot of things to play with and what we're asking you to do is take one of these two towns and if you take one of those two towns then you'll kick into kick you into a mission uh, you can have one of those two missions to play with. They're both great, but you get the sense of what's happening on the campaign map, and then you get some RTS gameplay, which both uh, you know are fantastic. And we've been listening to the players as they come off and what they're up, what they're thinking, and it's been great. Andy, you've been talking to them all day, and you've been here. Blast, yeah. It's been an absolute blast. Just getting the feedback, the reactions from the fans as they're coming off of the the machines. We've got we've got a lot of really excited people here, and it's been it's been thrilling to like get that in person up close, like connection with our community. Yeah, it's, it's been a ton of fun so far. So, Steve, uh, one of the questions that I was seeing a lot on social media was, uh, are we, are we going to be showing more before uh, more of the game before we launch? Uh, you know, what what is the team actually working on right now? So it's really important as we're coming towards the end and uh, approaching launch. We're in a phase right now where we're finaling the game, bringing in the final bit of polish, optimization, perform like performance, making sure that the game is in the best state possible. So, right now, you know, as we get this feedback, there's so, uh, there's so much we can do to a tune and adjust and balance based on what we're hearing and seeing. We're always going to be looking for opportunities to get more feedback, uh, but there's nothing to really, you know, announce until we're ready to, you know, players to see it live. Okay, no, that's that's terrific to hear. I mean, and the, the entire team is working so hard back at home. So huge shout out to all of our friends back in Vancouver working hard on the game. Um, so uh, first, first uh, question here from uh, Hermitrium on Discord: uh, What lessons have we learned, or? Or what lessons have Relic learned um, or, or are carrying forward from some of the games that we've worked on in the past? So, Steve, maybe you can speak to a little yeah, bit to that. Absolutely. One of the first things that we learned is we want to listen to our players and we want to uh, ensure that what we're delivering, what we have, we really, that our players are excited to see it. Um, Company of Heroes has an incredible legacy and we have players from all over the world that are passionate about what we have and what, we, what we're going to do. So one of the first things we wanted to do is make sure that Company of Heroes fans get the experience they want. And so we started speaking with our community from like day one. Uh, we created a community council of, of key people from the community, uh, uh, content creators, uh, you know, high ranking players, just so they got involved and started telling us what they'd like to see. Uh, that was a ton of fun to hear their voices and there's a lot of great ideas out there. We And so we settled in on what we were going to build based on those, uh, those, those conversations. Uh, next question here uh, from uh, Riceman on YouTube. I would love to know if it's going to be possible to play the dynamic campaign map in a multiplayer mode or co-op. I know that's a lot a request I've seen quite a bit on social. Uh, it's a bit of a tricky question, but uh, here for the hard, hard, hard questions and hard answers. Well, hard questions. All right. So at launch, it is a single player experience, and that's what we have, and that's what we're excited about, and we think it's going to be amazing, and players are going to love it. But what I, you know, I, I think. 
what players are going to be excited about is what we do afterwards. And when we, as we go forward, we'll have a lot of ideas and a lot of opportunities to explore all of these uh, modes and systems and all of that. But right now, at launch, uh, campaign map is single player experience. Yeah, no, uh, and, and to you know, speak to my own experience, I, I know that we have an incredible team back at home again in Vancouver doing incredible work and planning out what, what's the next six months, what's yeah. the next year, what's what's the next two, three, four years for Company of Heroes. So I, I think players are going to be really excited for what's to come. Another question here from Ashley on Facebook. She wants to know, is the game uh, going to be expanded with more factions and theaters? Um, so, you know, where are we going? What are we doing? I think we were just talking about that a little bit with post-launch, but, you know, I think factions and theaters are the big thing that players want to want to see more of. Absolutely. Like we want to deliver, uh, we're going to deliver, we want to deliver a great game at launch. And we have the biggest company of heroes yet, uh, four factions at launch, two single player experiences with our uh, campaign map and our operation in North Africa. Uh, so this is exciting already. But what we want to do is continue to keep players engaged and uh, with new content coming in all the time. And so there is going to always be an opportunity for the players to tell us what they want to see and for us to respond and give them what they're looking for. That's, that's the spirit of co-development. It is get involved with the community, get the feedback, talk to them, what's what's working, what's not, and how do they want to help us shape the product, the game, what kind of experiences do they want to have. So. That's also what we're doing here in Clone, right? We're let, let, letting players go hands-on, getting their feedback. You can see a bunch of them coming off right now. Next question here, uh, actually it's two questions, but I thought we'd combine them and, and talk to them uh, uh, in tandem here. So uh, Lane on uh, Facebook is asking, will we see the French? And HB on Discord was asking, will there be Australians since we're going to be going to Africa? So, Andy, maybe you could talk to maybe some of the nations that are going to be showing up, some of the rep representation that we're trying to have in Co3. Right, right. So the the theater, especially, well, everywhere, the entire theater was a global war. It's a gigantic war. Many, many nations are represented. And we've tried to reflect that as much as we possibly can within the factions, within the armies in Company of Heroes 3. So from the DAC having Italians as part of their core army to the battle groups uh, covering representation from places like Australia or different different portions of the UK, uh, the Indian artillery and representing the Gurkha and the great work that the people from that part of the planet brought to the war. Uh, we were attempting to reflect the reality of the diversity and, and the, the way it was a total global conflict. Yeah, no, I mean, and players have already had a chance to go hands on with some of those units, you know, in, in the pre office that we've done. Um, is, is, are, is there anything that you're excited for players to see in terms of like units that that maybe we've uh, haven't shown off yet? And maybe maybe some some fun little teases you could give us cheeky, some cheeky things. I it's been so long since pre alpha preview. I don't know how much time they had with hands on with the partisan units in, in the Italian theater. I don't necessarily know they weren't they weren't in there. Did I did I say something I shouldn't have said? That's really exciting because those units are those units are fun. They're really interesting. Uh, there is a Canadian. There's actually Canadians because well, of course we're Canadians. We got up ourselves in the game, but we were also there. We did stuff. They're they're in a mission so far. You can find them in one mission in Italy. Shout out to David Milne for putting them in a mission, and then we'll see where they go. There's there's some fun stuff to find out there if you go digging around in our missions. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. So. Uh, you know, Steve, we, we had some phenomenal feedback after the, the, the Mission Alpha. Yep. You know, we, we put out some stuff to sort of address some, some of the, again, the hard questions the players were asking us. So I wanted to ask you specifically, uh, because players are still asking, you know, um, ha have there been any major updates to uh, the UI, right, at, at the RTS level? You know, when do we get to, or when do players get to see some of those changes that we might be uh, implementing there? Yeah, the, the HUD was an ex excellent example of us, like listening to the players, the, the, the demo goes out, the pre, the, um, what's it called? Mission Alpha goes out. <laughs> and when we're at, when it's out there, the feedback comes in, the survey comes in, the forums, we're there listening and we see it. And what we saw was people talking about the HUD. And so immediately we went back to our team, we sat down and we focused in on, um, you know, what we're hearing from across the board and not just a single voice, but all the voices. What are we seeing? What are we hearing? And uh, we made it, we made a new um, UX mock-up of what we're thinking we want to do next. And uh, we have that and it's entering game right now. And we're talking about it back home, how that feels, how it's coming together and what that's going to look like. And then, but the other thing we recognize that it's an ongoing process. And so once this gets out there, we're gonna see what players say to that. And then we're gonna adjust again. But yeah, the, U, the HUD is something that we think our team has done a fantastic job. I think it looks gorgeous and we're excited about what we have, but it's an ongoing process and we wanna just keep refining it until we get it right. Yeah, and now I'm just asking questions because 
But like, I, I think that's maybe an important aspect of, of the the project right now is is it, it's going to be this continuous conversation with our players. Like, even once we get to launch and post launch, like how how are we going to continue to refine the game? Like for the for the coming years, like what's the, the philosophy around that? We want to be able to support both our single player community, uh, people playing against uh, the AI and comp stomps and all that, and people playing through our campaigns and operations. We also want to be able to support our multiplayer community who are passionate about, uh, you know, climbing the ladders and being, you know, the best in the world. So uh, both of those groups, we, we have content for them that we plan to support. And we want to listen and be engaged and listen. We've hired great community people like yourself, Cami and Gabby, which is an amazing opportunity to just reach out and talk to the players and and listen to what they are interested in. And that's and it's you're representing their voice to us, and you try to collect their voice and share it with us. And you have a seat at the table, helping them, helping us make decisions. Like there's obviously challenges with, uh, you know time and money and all the people and all that in technology this is we're making video games but it is a collaborative approach that we want to take and we want to do the best for our players and the best for um the, the company of heroes 3 for a long time the most, the most dedicated and, and sort of in the know people in our community will know that we've hired monolithic bacon and dev m and we have these really dedicated passionate people on the team who know the franchise intimately in a way that is you know it's thousands of hours of seen countless matches high level play and they're they're part of the team now they're in the conversation they're helping steer and they're representing beyond what john and the community team do at that they're that seat at the table they're pushing those those most passionate fans ideas so uh so final question and maybe this is a nice way to wrap things up uh, but you know we've been here for almost uh almost a week now i guess that game's got it feels like forever um but uh, players, I need a break. I need a break. <laughs> need a break. <laughs> so uh, what, what, what is the general vibe or what is the general feedback been from players throughout the week? Maybe Andy, we'll start with you because I know you've been on the booth a lot listening to players, talking to players. And Steve's been, been like being a business guy and having important meetings and talking to press, but and you've been down here on the floor yeah, too. Exactly. And that's and that's and that's the beauty of this all is we we are here and we're, there's there's dozens of people around us right now and they're here they're lined up they're excited to play the game they're hardcore passionate fans who who are excited to get their hands on new content or it's their first time ever touching the franchise or even a relic game and that's really neat so we've got this this mix of of energy from the floor and talking to press and just getting feedback from so many different angles and having mostly been on the floor it's just been it's been great it's been great, it's been positive, it's been fun, and people are excited, and they're they're like coming up to us and wanting to ask us questions and, and give us criticisms too, which is a super fun conversation to have with someone who's, you know, they've spent the money, come to Gamescom, lined up here, hung out, and then play our game, and like they have big ideas and big thoughts, and it, it's super energizing as a developer to have these conversations, to get that feedback, to meet these people. Like I can't, I can't, I don't know how to fully quantify being here, meeting humans who love our video game and how cool that is and how much I want to take that back to the team and bring that energy and, and put it back into the game because it, we're making the game for the players, right? Like we, we have ideas and we like the video game and we're passionate about it, but we are, we are providing something for them. It is how they want to spend their free time and fun. So, so it is, it is, it is the coolest thing to be here. What about you, Steve? How, how's the feedback been so far uh, throughout the week? Yeah. The, the best compliment that I feel like we've gotten has been this game feels like Co. Yes. Like and uh, one specifically, one specifically, I've heard that many, many times. Or like uh, people come up to us and say, "This feels like Co. One," and that actually, like, that is what our, we set out to do was to give that core experience to players, and that they uh, and you know within half an hour they say this feels like Co. One. I love that. That is one of their greatest compliments. And then the second thing I love doing is actually when something somebody calls out something very specific, they say, oh, I just love the VO on that particular unit. And that was so great. That was a great line and a great delivery. And I think about the team back home as well, like thinking about the people who worked on that, the people who wrote the line, recorded the line, brought it in, managed it, you know, and balanced it and put it in the game. I love it. I love the effects on that thing. I love the, the art on that thing. I love this. And, uh, you know, that tank was so cool. And it's like, I know the people who did that and they, they worked through that and they put their heart and soul in that. It's so great to kind of connect that love to the people that are actually there. I'm, I'm in a very fortunate position to be, you know, representing the game and the team. I, I think it's been great. And so it's been an honor to kind of stand here and talk to people. 
yeah. an honor is the best way of putting it because I I'm getting goosebumps listening to talk about it. Like <laughs> like honestly, truly, it is it is really special to be here and be representing our team, our amazing team back at home, working on finally the game, fixing bugs, polishing the experience, and like if people are happy about this, what we're showing now, and we've got time to go into launch to tighten things up, react to feedback, they're going to be they're going to be in another world when we hit our launch date. No, absolutely. And I think that also speaks to like the like the, the process that we've been through over the last, you know, five years plus, you know, with, with this franchise and sort of all the problems we have to work through, all the all the decisions we have to make and, and video game development. Yeah, that's that happens. <laughs> Not your first rodeo. Yeah, yeah, that, that's video game development. Yes. 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 And, and, and this is obviously the culmination of that. And we're close to, close to the finish line. And, and again, I think from from what you've been saying and from what we've been telling players is like we're in it for the long haul, right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We're here for our players. We want. We're listening. We're tr we're doing our best to give everybody what they want. We think we have an incredible game. With we know that it's on the cusp of of uh, being uh, something that players can immediately feel that co experience. There's new stuff for players as well. Uh, if I can plug, we got tactical pause as well for players new to the franchise who are looking for a way to kind of get into the RTS and have that moment of like slowing things down in there so that they can really get a sense of it on the single player side. Uh, so yeah, we've got a lot of game there for players to get their hands on. Awesome, and I think that's probably a good place to leave it. Uh, so thank you, Andy. Thank you, Steve, for your time. Really appreciate it. Folks, if you haven't checked it out, we just dropped a new trailer at Gamescom uh, where we tell you how you can play Co3 your way. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Follow us on uh, your channel of choice. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. So thanks for tuning in. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.